Can I get you some more clothes? No, thanks. Okay. Hey, Scott, come on. What? Calm down. Scotty, I gotta go. Oh, okay, Brian. Hey, thanks for listening last night. Oh, forget it. Oh, Leo, am I going to see you on the AA campus meeting tonight? Oh, we certainly are. And Gail's going to come, too. Oh, great. I'll see you there. Scott, look, just forget about what happened last night, will you? I can't help it, Brian. Well, maybe you can work something out when Higgins gets here. Yeah, maybe, maybe. At least I can find out and tell him exactly what happened and see what his reaction to all of it was. Just stay cool. See you tonight, Bye, Brian. Phillips, I'm Scotty's roommate. I'm leaving right now, but Scotty and his dad are waiting for you. Oh, John, come on in. Hey, thanks for coming over so quickly. I was glad that you called. I'm having trouble sorting out exactly what happened last night, even though I was there. Scotty and I are having the same problem. Yes, I've been working on a report to Judge Stallman, but it's all pretty confusing at this point. Hello, Scotty. Hello, Mr. Higgins. Can I get you some coffee? Thanks, yes. Okay. Oh, here, John, let me have you coat. Sit down, please. Now, John, the only thing I'm sure of in this whole situation at this point is that well, there's only one thing. Oh, what's that, Mr. Bowman? What happened to Laura and Scotty last night was a setup. And what makes you so sure of that? I know my son, John. Yes, but I don't. So if I just went by what I witnessed, I'd have to say that last night's events were pretty incriminating for Laura and your son. Mr. Higgins. Thanks. Look, I, I know that's the way it's, it looks. That's why Lee and I asked you to come over here, because we want to try and explain exactly what happened to you. Well, I'd like to hear that, Scotty. Well, nothing really happened. Well, well, I mean, nothing like what you think happened. You see, Laura and I, we went to the lodge for an early dinner so that I could have her home before her curfew. So we got on the road back to Port Charles about 7.30. And, and then the car just conked out. And I could not get it started, and I could not find out what was wrong with it. So we walked back up to the lodge, and that's when Laura called her folks, and I called the garage for that tow truck. And that's it. What about the reservation for a double room in your name? I don't know anything about that. I didn't make that reservation, and I didn't cancel that tow truck either. Well, how about your car starting right up when I went down with you to check it? I, I don't know. I cannot explain any of that. But if Laura and I wanted to spend some time alone in that hotel room, why did she call her folks so early? Well, I'm afraid I might be able to explain that one, Scotty. Well, how? Because I, I really don't understand that. Well, you understand that it's, it's part of my job to be suspicious. Now, I don't, uh, I'm not saying that this is the reason, but Laura could have called her parents as a cover -up for staying in that room with you for a few more hours, at least. Mr. Higgins, the reason why Laura called her parents... Getting angry isn't going to help this situation one bit. And remember, we're here to help Laura. I'm sorry, okay? It's all right, Scotty. I'd, uh, I'd like to ask you a few more questions, if you don't mind. Anything. Now, I understand that you and Laura were seeing each other before she became involved with David Hamilton. That's right. And that during that period, you had intimate relations with each other. Am I correct? Now, during that time, did you ever lie to Laura's parents or to your father to cover up for your behavior? Yes, I did, but that's nothing I'm proud of, and I swear Laura and I would never do that again. Scotty, I would like to believe you about last night, but you have no proof to back up your story. Now, without it, I have to, I have to present the facts to Judge Stallman as I found them. Does that mean that there's a chance that Judge Stallman might send Laura to reform school? I'm afraid there's a very good chance he just might do that. You see, if the judge feels that Laura's parents aren't providing proper discipline and that she lied again in order to cover up actions which defied court-imposed restrictions, I'd say there's a very good chance indeed. Uh, hello, Jesse. Hi, Jesse. How was Bud? Hi, Nick. 
come visit testimony before you walk in. Uh -uh, I'm from my top student, too. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Whitey. I'll take over now, Jesse. Okay, good. How about a cup of coffee, Jess? I'd love that, Audrey. I'll be in my office when I get back in case anybody calls. Okay. Good. Come on. I'm really sorry I woke you up. I just, I just wanted to call and say thank you again for everything that you did for me last night. Well, I don't know how it all turned out, because none of the Webbers are in yet. Nobody else around here seems to know anything about it. I'll find out more when Scotty gets here. But Luke, if you did everything like you said you did, it would be long now before Judge Stallman gets that report and our darling little Laura gets shipped off to reform school where she belongs. I bet you thought I'd never be ready in time. No, matter of fact, I knew you would be. I know how anxious you are to make this trip. I hope you haven't been too bored waiting for me. No, not at all. In fact, they gave me a chance to think of how I'm going to give Gary some advice. Oh, about selling his half of the practice? Yes, yes. I think that he's making a very premature decision on this. I mean, he's got a contract, but he hasn't started writing yet. Now, I know Gene is very, very concerned about him burning his bridges behind him. I wonder if Gina knows quite how lucky she is. In what way? Having a brother-in-law like you, always worrying about her best interests. Well, Dory, I've just always been a warrior, I guess. At least Gary always thought so. Well, what do you think? Well, I think I'm not like Gary. I don't know, just... You know, breezy, carefree. Just never have done. Well, breathing is isn't everything in life, you know. Mm, maybe not. But I've always envied him his outgoing, easy personality. Why? Well, because he's so popular. Even when we were kids. He was the one that everyone wanted to be with. Howard. Mm. I don't think you should envy Gary anything. Well, I better be leaving. Yes. I've always been a bit nervous of missing planes and first acts of plays and things like that. sitting here while you were packing, and it was very peaceful. I think apartments would like the people who live in them. I don't think I can take any more compliments at the moment, Howard. Is there anything I can do for you while you're gone? Oh, I don't think so. The woman next door is coming in to water the plants, and I think everything else will take care of itself. I'll only be gone for a few days. Yeah, a few days with Mark and Katie. Yes. You're really looking forward to it, aren't you? Yes, I am. For several reasons. Sounds mysterious. Well, it isn't really. It's just... Well, there's something rather important I want to find out while I'm there. Well, I hope you find whatever it is you're looking for. Thank you. I'm going to miss you too, Howard. I'm glad. Jeff, I'm really sorry you haven't heard from Jameson again. The wedding must be very hard on you. Yeah, it is. But the guy's got me over a barrel, and he knows it. Steve, how'd you know he didn't call? Well, Heather was here earlier this morning, and she told me. What was she doing here? She came by to drop off a book to a patient. Ah. Uh, Steve, you excuse me? I want to talk to Bobby for a second. Oh, certainly. But don't forget, we're having coffee in the cafeteria. Bobby? Hi, Jeff. Hi. Listen, you remember that message we were talking about the other day, the one from Jameson from Buffalo? Mm-hmm. The one I gave to Heather. 
Yeah, I'm sorry, Bobby, but Heather says you never gave it to her. Jeff, I did. I remember handing it to her. Look, maybe you thought you did and something happened. The phone rang and maybe you mislaid it? No, because you can't mislay a message around here. Why? Well, because any message that comes in, or even if it's laying on the desk, it automatically goes in here, see? Do you mind if I take a look for myself? Oh, sure, go ahead. It's not that I don't believe you, Bobby, but uh, Heather's positive that you never gave it to me. Here it is. I don't believe it. See for yourself. Jeff, I don't understand that. I mean, this message is several days old. I've been through that thing five times. I know I would have seen it. Bobby, come on now. You don't have to get upset about it. People do make mistakes, you know. Just try to be a little more careful from now on, huh? Especially since I'm expecting another call from Jameson. And it's very important that I get it as soon as it comes in, all right? Okay. I'll be down in the cafeteria for now. temperamental author already. Of course I'm thrilled about Julian's enthusiasm. Gary, you're usually so quick on the uptake. Obviously, I was entertaining someone when you called last night, which is why I couldn't go into raptures with you over your success in New York. <laughs> Look, I hope you're not just lying back and enjoying that uh, advance. You better start writing your book right away before your publisher loses interest. You yeah. have? Good. One more thing, Gary. Have you been able to uh, find out for me whether or not Monica's pregnant? Oh. No, I'm still dying of curiosity, so keep after it, will you? No, oh, no particular reason. It's just that I'll talk to you later. Bye. Tracy, you have the most extraordinary habit of ending telephone conversations abruptly the minute I walk into a room. Do I really? Yes. It leads me to believe that you are using the company phone for calls other than business calls. Am I correct? My goodness, you are absolutely correct about this one. Shall I leave a dime on your desk? No, this one's on me. Thank you very much. That's because I have a favor to ask you. I should have known you wouldn't throw a dime away that recklessly. What is it, brother dear? 